spring cleaning. It's time for spring cleaning, you guys. And if there were ever a time for spring cleaning, now absolutely would be it. I mean, we are in spring, obviously, but also we have this, this new start coming forward. And again, the new moon on the 30th, Saturday the 30th, is absolutely, I'm hearing a changing point, a game changer for us. So use the energies of this new moon to really help you sweep away anything that is standing in the way of your new manifestations, of your new sense of reality, of your new sense of self, of your new direction, your new career path, your new career trajectory, whatever this means for you. In all of the ways that this could mean it for you, allow this new moon and also the retrograde of uh, Pluto to help you cleanse everything out, okay? But we're going to do a reading here, and um, I have a specific format that I have been guided to work with. I have the before and after Tarot decks, of which I'm going to help us, ta I'm going to help us gain clarity. In terms of the before Tarot, we're going to look at the past, okay? And I want to give, I want to bring the past into focus, what needs to be released, what needs to be rehealed. I want to bring that into focus for the collective. Keep in mind, guys, this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But I want to give in a general focus, excuse me, pull it into focus so we can have a clear understanding of what needs to be released, what needs to be let go of here. Then we're going to get into the after tarot and we're going to see what we're moving forward towards, what lies ahead, okay, or what we can do. Well, actually, let me think about this really quick. Because while I was meditating earlier, I did get that into focus. But what are we looking at with the after tarot spirit? Spirit said how we can cleanse these energies. What we need to focus on to move forward out of these energies. And ironically enough, look at the bottom of the deck. I haven't even shuffled for any of these yet. But the Knight of Swords is at the bottom of the deck. Okay. So the energies of clearing this stuff away. What's at the bottom of the before tarot? Oh. The Four of Cups, which is reversed. Interesting. So there is a little, uh, there is a level here, and then you have the Knight of Swords that popped out. There is a level here of resistance to let certain things go. Looky here, still drinking from that cup of the old. Ooh, okay. And then I have the Golden Universal Tarot. <laughs> I have the golden universal tarot here, which is going to talk about our way forward, a path ahead, what it is we can expect in the future. And look at what's at the bottom of the deck. The eight of wands, clear and open pathway to move forward, having been released from these burdens. Beautiful, you guys. And then we're going to close the reading out with some oracle guidance from the crystal mandala deck. Yes. All righty, kids. So let's get into this. I'm going to start shuffling here. We're going to start with the, I have, I should have made more space. Anyway, we're going to start with the, uh, wow, I have so much stuff in the way. <laughs> Spring cleaning, you guys. Look at that. Do you see, do you see how I'm recognizing how I have so much in the way here? Recognize that for yourselves. Let's start doing that. Let's talk about that. We're going to start with the before tarot here. All right, spirit. What's in the way? Help us bring this into clear view, into clear focus. Five shuffles, one. Help us bring this into clear view, into clear focus, please, spirit. This is two. What is in the way? What from the past needs to be seen, needs to be focused on so that it can be released? This is three. Please help us bring this into clear and present focus. Four. And five. All right, kids. What can we, what needs to be released from the past? Clear and present focus, please, spirit. Okay. Please excuse me. <laughs> All right. Overall energy here is the Empress. Okay, now keep in mind, guys, we're talking in terms of the past.
What I'm getting for the Empress, from the Empress in terms of the collective, is there has been what we've been holding on to, or we've been holding on to things from an unconditionally loving nature. Now, I definitely want to say that an element of this past energies or what it is we've been holding on to the nature by which we've been holding on to this energy has been in fact because of the rise of the divine feminine and the unconditionally loving and nurturing nature that comes from that okay whether you find yourself on dominantly on the masculine side or the feminine side it doesn't matter all of us have been experiencing this rise of the divine feminine and the unconditionally loving and nurturing nature that comes with that so in other words there has been a level of us needing to learn how to have greater or stricter boundaries because Whatever it is we've been holding on to in the past, we've been holding on to it because we didn't want to we didn't want to reject. And and some of us are kind of some of you are kind of hearing that and listening to me and kind of like what that doesn't make any sense. Why would I not why would I not want to reject some things that maybe have rejected me? It's tricky, okay? It's kind of a tricky energy, but that's kind of what I'm feeling here. It's this enabling element of the Empress that we've been that has been helping us to hold on to certain things. So maybe it's not just maybe it's in some cases for the collective, it's uh, enabling others by holding on to this energies and keeping us in ourselves in this negative cycle of resentment, of pain, of letting allowing individuals to live in our head or in our space rent free so to speak but also there's a level of enabling yourself in terms of some sort of resentment or drama that it is you've been familiar with holding on to a level of comfort zone maybe even addiction how you may have been addicted to the drama or addicted to the past or addicted to whatever it is you've been holding on to in some way. And it's not necessarily just because you're addicted to it. It's also because it's kind of familiar. And that's where that the familiarity is where the kind of addiction comes in. You held on to it because it's familiar. You held on to it because you knew it. You held on to it because in certain ways, or maybe even in many ways, it was very much a part of your identity. Aha! And what are we moving forward towards? A new state of identity a new sense of self. So now this unconditionally loving nature of the empress here needs to be shifted in terms of allowing yourself to release the old, loving yourself unconditionally enough, allow, oh, loving yourself unconditionally enough to allow this new state of identity to come forward here, which is something that I talk about in that new moon energy with the North Node being in Aries, the South Node being in Libra, right? Check that out if you haven't seen it already. But a loving yourself enough to let go of this past state of identifying or a past identity in order to have the new start. Ace of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, ooh, Queen of Swords are all at the end, at the bottom of the deck. Queen of Swords to the Ten of Pentacles to Judgment, y'all. Why? Because these situations are done, are closed out. There's no reason to hold on to this anymore. Judgment. There is no reason to hold on to this anymore. Queen of Swords. Whoops. Ooh. Okay. Let's focus more on the, on not the malicious nature potentially of the Queen of Swords, but also of using the energy of the Queen of Swords to cut anything away that is superfluous. No bullshit, no, no holds barred, no, no if, ands, or buts about it. If it's blocking your way, if it's blocking your new seed to plant, you got to cut it away, all right? That was just overall energy at the bottom of the deck, you guys. Let's look at what has come out here. We do have two piles. Intuitively, I'm feeling like this is two main narratives, but we'll get into it specifically as we move forward. The first pile are three cards or is, excuse me, the first pile is three cards and they are, they have fallen face up. The second pile has fallen face down. So let's talk about this first pile. You have the, oh boy, hold on. 
Okay, but that's kind of... What just happened here is I went to pick up the this first card, which is the Nine of Pentacles, and it fell off on the floor. It's like it was pushed away from me. And that's pretty... That's pretty relevant to what I'm feeling here because you have the Nine of Swords, I'm sorry, the knight, uh, Nine of Pentacles to the Two of Swords to the Hierophant. There has been a level of dogma. There has a level of men, maybe for many of us, uh, societal conditioning, status quo, same old, same old, a previous structure, a previous life form. I'm hearing a previous life system, a system of, from our previous sense of self that we're shifting out of in this time that has been standing in the way holding us back from a level of or from a sense of independence i'm so sorry guys hold on a second i don't know if you could hear that but there was an announcement rolling by and i wanted to i didn't want it to disturb the reading so i had to pause for a second but 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 that interference is kind of in I, honestly, again, I don't know if you guys could hear that. Um, you probably couldn't because it wasn't too loud. But there is a, there's a, there is an interference here. There's some sort of structure. I'm hearing the financial system. Okay. Oh, ooh, that's deep. Unpack that for yourselves. For some of you, that is relevant here. But financial institution there's some sort of institutional energy institutionalized energy that has been blocking keeping you blinded to your sense of independence nine of pentacles the sense of who you truly are this could be familial this could be societal I, take it as it resonates for you there is an old structure, a level, a, a structure of indoctrination, an indoctrinative structure that has been keeping us from a sense of independence. I'm hearing, I keep hearing from a sense of who we truly are. It's like they've been wanting to keep you blinded to the fact that you are an independent God source creator energy. You have an abundance of your own. You have a life of your own that no one can really take from you unless you allow yourself to be indoctrinated here. And what I'm feeling with this Hierophant energy, however this resonates for the collective, there is a level of wanting to be able to fit in. Because it was sold to us somehow. I mean, I'm thinking of just feeling, for me as a child, as I was growing up, I mean, I was born in 1987, Okay, so think of that generation, but it's not just that generation, it's all generations. We were sold a pipe dream. And in many in previous generations, things worked exactly as they said they were going to. Not in mine. I feel like I'm part of a generation here, the millennials, where we were at the very edge. Many of us have been at the very edge of that we'll call it the American dream. We were at that point where we just watched. We were sold the dream and we were reaching for it, but we just quite couldn't grasp it. And we've been watching everything fall ever since. Kind of in a state of limbo, right? That's just an analogy. Take it as it resonates. But what I'm feeling here is also there was a need to, a desire to fit in to the status quo. But in order to do that, we had to sacrifice a level of independence a level of sovereignty a level of the god-given gift of who we truly are two of swords nine of pentacles blinding us to the truth of our personal state of abundance uh, i mean like again this could be figurative or this could be literal but what i'm feeling here in this energy is the the how the institutions led us to believe that we are not safe, we are not secure, we, are, we cannot be healthy, we cannot have financial abundance, we cannot achieve our goals if we don't play the game, if we don't give in to the institutions, if we don't give our power away to the doctors, the lawyers, the, 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 the institution, the controlling aspect. That's how they control us. Case in point, one of the most literal ways that this is expressed is in how religion 
has worked to re separate you or separate the individual from God saying how you are, you are a sinner. You are, you need repentance just because of your humanity. You are not worthy to speak to God directly. You have to go through an intermediary in a priest or whatever be to be able to speak to God. They literally took us, separated us from God in order to control us. I'm not here to bash religion. I personally feel like religion is a, is an integral part of human society, um, is a absolutely, absolutely a stepping stone to the ultimate of spirituality in which you create your own relationship with God source creator. You realize that you are an extension of God source creator. Okay. I have no, I have nothing against religion. And if you practice religion at this time, good, excellent. But the indoctrination here is an element of that. The ways that we have been controlled through this, the ways that we have been blinded to our independence. Okay. That's what's on the surface, you guys. Let's look at these four cards here that have come out that are face down. Very interesting. Okay, um, give me a second. Let me re rearrange these here. We have the Three of Pentacles in reverse, the Eight of Cups in reverse, the Five of Swords, and the counterpart to the Hierophant, the High Priestess. All of this has been necessary in terms of what it is we are releasing, what it is we are needing to release, what it is we're needing to let go of in order to move forward in our lives as these God source creator type beings has been necessary. It's been a bit of an initiation process, okay? We have three of pentacles in reverse, in this case, the Three of Pentacles is representing a level of self-mastery, of working on the self. But in order to really work on the self, well, Three of Pentacles is reverse is saying, we didn't really need to work on ourselves. Or it led to a belief or feeling that we did not need to work on ourselves in truer ways other than what the indoctrination told us remember because it was blinding us to the truth of our real identity and sovereignty and independence right so if we have if we have this structure here or this institution here that is doing everything for us what do we need to work on ourselves for what do we need to work on mastering ourselves for we've got everything we've got we've got we've got that all handled right in order to be able to work on ourselves, we would need to walk away from the status quo, Eight of Cups. And we were constantly being fought against in terms of that. There's that Five of Swords. It feels like with this Five of Swords, any time we would step up or rise up or speak up for the truth, for reality, for sovereignty, for authenticity, we were beat down. Five of swords. But what these institutionalized energies did not understand was that every time they beat us down, their reputation also took a hit. And eventually, we would say, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm not even going to engage with this any longer. And that's the real lesson of the five of swords five of swords energy is lose lose everybody loses no matter who wins no matter who comes out on top everybody loses it is a detriment to everyone so what do you do with the five of swords you place your sword down on the ground and you back away slowly no sudden movements you just you just exit the situation and once you do that you are initiated into the higher realm the high priestess 
You release yourself from the lower vibration, the 3D, the physical, Okay, don't get me wrong. In terms of all of this, the Hierophant is very much necessary. I don't want you to look at the energies of the Hierophant and bash these energies like I used to do a lot. Okay, this is a very, necess this is a very necessary part of the process. The Hierophant and the High Priestess go hand in hand. They are two sides of the same coin. The Hierophant representing the physical, the High Priestess representing the spiritual. The non-physical. Because the Hierophant is kind of spiritual too. Just in a very third dimensional physical way. It's all meant to teach. So what needs to happen now? Stop fighting for it. Stop enabling yourself to stay in these energies. To fight for this. To go over this over and over again, to live in the past, to live in the pain, to live in the resentment, to live in the heartbreak, to remain connected to the pain, the past, the heartbreak, the resentment, because it's familiar. There is nothing that you can gain from this while still holding on to it, while still rolling around in the muck with it, while still tangoing with it. Nothing. Because there is no progress here. All you will do is find yourself still rolling around in the muck years later. It's time to put down the sword and back away slowly so that you can move on to the opportunities that lie ahead of you. Oh, 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 yeah. To the opportunities that lie ahead of you. To the seeds of the new that can be planted in your garden that the Empress represents that the Empress represents, yeah? Okay. Let's move forward, guys. Cheers. I mean, this is coffee, but... <laughs> mm. Do you guys remember this mug? This was my first morning, my original morning coffee mug. I still love this thing. Ugh, I'm so sorry. Maybe I should, hold on a second. Okay, let's move forward. We're gonna go to the after tarot now and we're gonna talk about the cleansing process, yes? What, message does, what messages do you have for us, Spirit, in terms of the cleansing, clearing, and healing process? Moving forward here, five shuffles, one. What messages do you have for us, Spirit, two? In terms of the cleansing, clearing, and healing process. This is three. Four. Let's take this one. Woo! <laughs> and this is five. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, check it out. We have a significator here. And as I was shuffling, a card took, caught my attention and I heard spirit say, take that one. It's the tower. <laughs> the old structures are coming down and it's all coming down in favor of what it is you truly want. The queen of wands, that which you truly desire to be in alignment with, that which you truly desire to draw towards you. Because look, when you really think about it, you don't want this energy any longer. Who would want the Five of Swords energy? I mean, I'm sure there are some dark neg negative entities out there that would, but that's not us, right? We're trying to live in the light here. Okay. So let's talk about this. This tower falling down, this process of releasing the old to, to engage with the new peace spirit. Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> oh. 
overall energy here we have the two of swords to the sun to the eight of cups to the six of swords to the ten of cups to the hermit to the four of wands okay um this is all about releasing fear trusting in the universe trusting in the divine this, in the divine this is about th this cleansing and healing process is absolutely about allowing yourself to come out of a sense of denial and allowing that which needs to be illuminated to be illuminated so that you can walk away so that you can move forward so that you can achieve your 10 of cups but in order to do that you have to allow yourself to see what needs to be seen within Pay very close attention to your dreams during this time period. Very close attention. Okay? The windows of your soul or the windows to your soul are wide open here. Allow yourself to see what needs to be seen. Allow yourself to come out of this sense of or this state of denial. There's no, way, there's, there's no other way around it. If you do not, then you will continue to be stuck here in the Five of Swords, unable to do the self-mastery work, Three of Pentacles, that you would need to do in order to manifest the Magician. Now, the Magician was the first card that came out, and it fell on the floor. But I decided to continue pulling before I picked it up. And by the time I picked it up, I picked it up and it was reversed. This Five of Swords energy, coupled with the Two of Swords energy, the state of denial that in many cases we have been trapped in, okay? In, I, I, ooh, in some cases, I'm feeling like the Five of Swords here is an element of you fighting for that state of denial or some of us fighting for that state of denial. That has been keeping us from doing the necessary self-mastery work three of pentacles do you see how we're getting so many repeat cards here because the three of pentacles came out in reverse in terms of the past but now and so did the five of swords but the five of swords came out upright the five of swords is upright here okay that's fine but do you but this energy coupled with this two of swords energy fighting for the past, fighting for what has always been, has been the biggest detriment to us. Why? Because there is only one constant in the universe, in life, in life, in existence, and that's what? Change. Fighting for what has always been has been the biggest detriment to society, to humanity, to the planet, to the universe, to existence. Existence is in place for change. Why? Because we evolve, we grow, we expand, we reach new horizons. You can't do that if you don't change. Now, the scariest part about this change is the fact that needing to change or the requirement of change also requires you to work on yourself. Three of Pentacles, self-mastery. When that change comes in, you've got to rework your situation. You've got to go back to the drawing board and fix the situation or align the situation with the new that you are entering into. This is always going to happen. This is never going to stop. As long as you are focused consciously within existence, regardless as to whatever dimension you are consciously focused on at any given time in your soul's ex experience, there will always be a new level to achieve. There will always be a new foundation to build. There will always be change to adapt to, period. The tower, yes. Change is coming. We have three more cards here that have come out face down. We have the Seven of Pentacles, the Page of Cups, and the Queen of Pentacles. 
This is feeling like a universal energy, okay? What the universe is asking us to do in terms of this change, in terms of enacting this change and creating this space, bringing the towers down of belief systems, belief structures, old ways of beings, the old identities, old ways of identifying this, that, and the third, whatever. In terms of bringing this tower down, what the universe is asking us to do is to first and foremost take stock. Seven of Pentacles. Take stock in, and this is why, this is why it is so important for us to really spend some solitary time with ourselves and to meditate during this new moon energy in, in efforts to release and to plan also, right? All of this is discussed in that new moon video. Again, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. It is titled Enriching the New Sense, Your New Sense of Self. Spirit and the universe are asking us to take stock. Who were you in the past? Who are you that you know yourself to be now? And who do you see yourself being moving off in the future? Also, more specifically, where do you see yourself going in terms of the future, in terms of the new, especially in relation to the past? And what can you do to clear that out so that you can focus on your dreams, on the new that is entering into your life, the fresh experiences that are entering into your life, the page of cups, which is the dreamer energy. What do you dream of now versus back then is a very specific question that spirit just asked. What do you dream of now versus what you dreamt of in the past? Because many of us in this collective here, are holding on to dreams from the past for, specifically speaking, societal reasons. Okay, take that as it resonates. There is a level of not wanting to let certain individuals down. Maybe not even let yourself down. Maybe not let your inner child down. Because there are things that you have been working on that you're still trying to pursue that you once wanted as a child or as a younger person or your inner child once said, I want that. But your inner child is going with the flow. Your inner child is not going to be disappointed or feel let down by anything that needs to be released because your inner child wants to move forward in this way as well. It is you. It is your ego that is holding on to these situations saying, well, I don't want to let it go because why ego? Oh, because I don't want to let so-and-so down. That kind of sounds like a cop-out, doesn't it? So what can we let go of in terms of our dreams moving forward in the future so that we can honor those dreams? Queen of Pentacles. Notice, other than the Hierophant and the, and the High Priestess, the only... Um, real figures well i want to maybe i shouldn't say it that way I, what i, I what i want to say is i want to bring your attention to the the feminine energy that is kind of driving this new way forward we have the queen of pentacles now but we also have the high priestess and the empress nurturance care unconditional love bringing things to fruition through uh, bringing things to life through nurturance. But the Queen of Pentacles is asking you very specifically to do what is necessary to do what is right by your new manifestations, to commit to your new manifestations. The Queen of Pentacles, ah, ah, wait, oh, the Queen of Swords did come out, but she was at the bottom of the deck of the original, of the uh, before Tarot. The Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles, in my opinion, there she is. <laughs> I went right to her. The Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles, in my opinion, as a reader, are best friends. And you, many of y'all have heard me say this before. They're very similar energies. Neither one of them are going to take any shit. Neither, uh, both of them are going to cut right down to the nitty gritty of it. Cut right down to the quick. It is what it is. And either you do what, you, what is necessary or you get left behind or you get cut out. Now, the Queen of Pentacles is more compassionate, a little more emotionally aware than the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords ain't, have, ain't got 
no time for emotion, okay, or compassion. She is strictly black or white. It is what it is. I don't give a damn about your feelings. Queen of Pentacles, she's a little more compassionate, but she's more of a tough love situation, and her compassion only goes so far, <laughs> okay? Don't piss her off. Don't piss either of them off, but don't piss them off because they will cut you out as soon as possible, as soon as necessary. So with that said, the energy of the Queen of Pentacles is saying, do what is necessary for your dreams, for your energies to come to fruition. Don't waste time on superfluous energies. Don't waste time in situations that are not reciprocal for you. Don't waste time in situations or connections or career paths or creative projects or whatever that do not give you the full extent of what it is you are deserved in return. Period. Just don't do it. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy. Focus your efforts on bringing the new into fruition. Okay? Beautiful. Last, in terms of the tarot here, I want to get um, a poll on what's to come. And Spirit is saying what's to be expected. That could go many different ways, you guys. <laughs> okay? Many different ways. What's to be expected? That's all they're saying. All right. Five shuffles here. And you might hear... There's some yard work going on in the background. Cleaning up. Spring. Hello. Spring cleaning. Yes. Okay. What's to be expected? Please. Spirit five shuffles. One. Mm -hmm. Try that again. One. Take this one. Two of pentacles. Okay. Two of pentacles came out. I am going to put it back in the deck, but this is about balancing. Okay. Weighing the options. What's more important here? Wow, wow. Okay, Eight of Wands is at the bottom of the deck. We did see that before. Oh, sorry, that's reversed. We did see that before. But now the Two of Pentacles to Judgment has come out or wants to be seen at, at least. It's time to cut your losses. It's time to go do your pros and cons, okay? Do your pros and cons. Yes, Two of Pentacles, balancing. No more juggling. Instead, weighing the options and see which one fits better. Yes? All right, Spirit, what's to come? Five shuffles, one. My apartment is being filled with the lovely smell of fresh cut grass right now. Spring cleaning. <laughs> this is two. What's to come, please, Spirit? What do you have for us in terms of messages of what's to come? This is three. Four. And five. What's to come, please, Spirit? What messages do you want to give to the collective in terms of what is to come? Thank you so much for your guidance, please. Thank you so much for your guidance, Spirit. Again. Oh, my God. What's to come, please, Spirit? That's enough right there. <laughs> okay. What's to come? Overall energy is the Page of Cups. A manifestation of your dreams. Or what I'm feeling actually is the ability to step into this new dreamer energy. What's really the real focus for the collective right now is to really focus on letting go of what needs to let go of so you can fully step into this dreamer energy, this page of cups, and start bringing your dreams, current dreams, into fruition. What's to come? Page of cups, five of wands, nine of swords, six of wands. And the Queen of Cups. So what's to come? The resolution of some sort of internal conflict and even external conflict. Okay. This is the external conflict feels very specifically 
surrounding the north node being in aries the reality of the north node being in aries and the south node being in libra for the collective again pay very close attention because that is a part of what i i, I speak directly to that in the new moon reading titled empowering your new sense of self pay very close attention to what i say about the north node being in aries and the south node being in libra for the collective but it is in terms of the external external uh, conflict that is very much connected to that north node aries south node libra but also a sense of internal conflict that is creating anxiety in terms of moving forward and that is that what's to come is clearing that up so that you can enter into this page of cups energy or reality and 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 focus on that and that's where the victory comes in six of wands why because you have a deeper understanding of your emotions you're more deeply connected to your emotions you're more deeply connected to your your dreams you have gone through a healing process in terms of that in this case the queen of cups here is representing the healing that comes from this okay that is what's to come that is what's to be expected but there's more each and every step of the way in terms of the tarot here you guys this energy has come out the five of swords but what's to come? What's to be expected? Balance in terms of this. Five of Swords with Temperance. Two more cards here have fallen. Oh, I'm sorry. Three more cards have fallen face down. The Magician in reverse. The Six of Swords in reverse blockage not being able to move forward not being able to see clearly not being able to manifest your dreams what's to come transformation out of that death but what do you have to do you have to face yourself and the music queen of cups Five of Swords, Temperance. You have to drop your swords. You have to drop the fight. You have to give up the lose-lose battle. You have to focus inward. You have to focus on healing yourself, preparing yourself for the new that is to come. And, by, and, you, ha and you do that by going within and focusing on your feelings, focusing on your emotions, focusing on what needs to be released. Again, pay very close attention to your dreams at this time. Not just your dreams, but also your intuition, your intuitive hits, Queen of Cups. That is the only way to get through this. That is, only, that is the only way to go through the transformation, death, so that you can turn this Magician and Six of Swords energy upright. That is what's to come. beautiful you guys we're going to close this reading out with oracle guidance from the crystal mandala oracle yes excellent five shuffles here one two closing oracle guidance please spirit this is three Four. And five. All right, closing Oracle guidance, please, Spirit. That's it right there. Card number 27. Ascended Master Saint Germain and Amethyst. Spiritual connection um i want to get two cards one more card please spirit what's the last message that you have for the collective okay and finally we have card number 43 goddess matanji and heliotrope heliotrope excuse me already there is value 
Um, let's start with that one. Yeah, we're going to start with 43. We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. That already there is, oh my God. Okay, I have been working with this deck for quite a few years now. And the way that I have been saying this phrase has never really made sense to me. But I finally got it. It's this, it's, is it syntax? It's not syntax. Is it syntax? The way in which it's, it's said. Already, there is value. So really, the way, it, the, the way to say it, which makes sense, would be already, comma, there is value. Interesting. We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. It is natural for creative energy to become excited by new possibilities, new ideas, and new forms. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. Sounds like yourself, doesn't it? Sounds like some hermit energy, doesn't it? Hmm. Sometimes there is a need to shed the past and all associated with it completely, starting afresh. However, at other times, there is something of value from the past that can, if allowed to bask in the light of your creativity, become very valuable for your future. In your enthusiasm to move forward in life, don't forget to take the value that already exists in your world along with you. That seems very much like both sides of what is happening here. We're completely letting go of the old, the outdated, okay, the hierophant to the tower, but also reconnecting with the sense of selves that we already are, that we have been essentially disconnected from. And a lot of this kind of feels like the energy of moving, uh, keeping with like say Western or tropical astrology and now shifting into true sidereal astrology, which takes into account what takes into account, number one, the fact that there's a 13th sign that has been ignored for centuries but number two, how everything has shifted since tropical astrology has been put in place. Brilliant. Genius. Finally, we have card number 27. Ascended Master Saint Germain, or Saint Hermain, and Amethyst, Spiritual Connection. Here we go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Sorry guys, we had another one of those rolling announcements going on. Anyway, here we go. Spiritual connection. We bring you the blessing of spiritual connection. There are times on your life path when you will feel alone. If you are working on an issue or going through a challenging time and don't feel particularly supported or that others understand, even though they may love you, then that sense of loneliness may increase for a time. Or perhaps you wonder if you are as spiritually connected as you could be. Perhaps you have been asking for confirmation of your divine connection or for some sort of sign that what you think might be divine guidance is genuine. This oracle comes with a message. You are capable of conscious spiritual connection and that connection is growing in power every time you talk to the universe through prayer or any act of devotion. You are also being asked to release any barriers around your heart and mind so you can allow the unconditionally loving voice of spirit to be heard in your heart and soothe your mind. So there you have it, guys. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Happy new moon to you. Happy discovery of the new of yourself through the clearing of the old. I wish you guys well. I hope you have a good time with this. Please try and stay grounded as much as you possibly can. I love you all so very much. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Okay, cute. <laughs> Bye.